I'd like to give you an example of how biomarkers of aging can be used in real life. So there was this paper that came out a couple of years ago in the journal Cell, and it was done by uh, Dr. Michael Snyder, who is the head of Department of Genetics at Stanford University. So he and his research team analyzed 40,000 parameters in uh, Dr. Snyder's um, basically blood. So they uh, had uh, about 20 time points and the measurement was done um, within a little over a year and they were analyzing what happened to the levels of those uh, 40,000 parameters and they were able to basically establish uh, the time point when Dr. Snyder uh, had the onset of his type 2 diabetes and he uh, sequenced his genome and he had uh, the genes that um, basically um, said that oh he has the predisposition to type 2 diabetes but he wouldn't have gone to the doctor and really wouldn't pay that much attention because um, uh, well uh, it's just a predisposition how can you um, really use this in real life well this is how uh, by closely monitoring what was happening um, with the biological processes in his body um, the researchers were able to establish the onset of disease and this is crucial because uh, by analyzing uh, this type of data we can uh, come up with super early uh, diagnostics and we can prevent age-related diseases like type 2 diabetes, cancer, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, maybe some of them, uh, and uh, this can be a really powerful tool uh, in combating those pathologies.